So, fun story. For the past few weeks, you all probably have not noticed, unless you watch my morning live stream that I do every single morning over on twitch.tv slash Bros, I have not had my main PC. I've actually been using my secondary streaming PC, which is an i7-5820K with my GTX 1080. And, well, there was an incident that happened on my live stream that kinda, well, killed my main PC. And here's exactly what happened in a nutshell. Megahertz. Oh, really? It's probably the XMP profile. Like, some XMP profiles don't work very well. You may have... One. So basically what happened is a power surge happened during my stream and now my PC is not booting up properly. So yay, good times. Is this my SSD? Where's my SSD, dude? I don't even remember how I have this set up. I think there's somewhere on my M.2 chat. I have I have unplugged all my hard drives and now it's saying there's no boot device. Professional streamer? That's what pro streamers do, chat. In Twilight, dude, I agree. If, th if this drive's not in here, I'm gonna cry. <gasps> no! pro streamers do chat so to say all of that was a headache is a total understatement having that happen to my pc at a time where we were trying to make a ton of content for the channel was really discouraging and really hurt me in trying to keep my creative process going and having to switch to a pc that was less powerful mind be it first world problems i know it's a 58 20k it was just really hindering me from being able to do my game streams and be able to edit the footage that we record at full 4k compared to my well ryzen 7 1700 pc with its full eight cores and and 16 threads. The funny thing is though, my PC wasn't actually broken and I'm gonna explain exactly what happened and how I went from having this PC to this baller looking custom mod PC. It's a very interesting story and hopefully you can sit back, relax and enjoy. But first, a word from today's sponsor. As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot, doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. So TLDR, my PC actually wasn't broken from the power surge that happened on my live stream. Uh, well, my PC actually just got a little bit of jolt that it didn't really want, and in the end, no hardware actually died. And what I did was take this as an opportunity to basically rebuild my PC and do a custom sticker bomb mod on an NZXT H500 that I've always wanted to do. Well, originally it was the NZXT S340, but when the H500 was released, and I wanted to do this mod and kind of make my my dream PC again. I made a PC mod a few years ago focused around my favorite collegiate basketball and football team, the UK Wildcats, University of Kentucky, and I loved that case. It was a really awesome case, but it was causing me nothing but problems. I was getting short circuiting issues, and it just seemed to be a good idea for me to just start on a new clean slate with this motherboard, GPU, CPU, RAM, and just my entire system needed to be transplanted into something, well, Fresh. And this is the story of how I put together my H500 sticker bomb PC mod. So as I mentioned, this is something that I've always wanted to do. I've always been a big fan of the sticker bomb mod aesthetic, uh, always following like keyboard culture, mechanical keyboard culture, where there's a lot of sticker bombing and a bunch of different modding that's done using stickers and custom vinyl. And I was a really big fan of that aesthetic, kind of like a graffiti look and also the people who load up their laptops with a bunch of stickers. Yeah, you see, I'm that kind of guy. People hate people like me but you know, I, I love this look. So I basically wanted to replicate that on a custom case. And the best way for me to do that was to find a case that had a blank enough aesthetic while also having a really good aesthetic to match what I was looking for. And NZXT cases have always come to my attention as being the cleanest looking cases on the market with the ability to do custom mods in them and having just a really, really almost like modern aesthetic to it compared to some of the other cases out there on the market that try too hard to be gamery. NZXT comes out with cases that are very neutral and allow people to be creative in customizing it to fit their needs. And the NZXT H500 was a case that I had my eye on for the past couple of weeks. And then while I was on a trip in Cincinnati at my nearest micro center, I managed to pick up an H500 and was able to start planning out this mod. Now there was two ways I could go about doing this mod. I could have went with a vinyl wrap which there are vinyl wraps that are literally just sheets of vinyl that have stickers printed on them. It's not actually stickers. It's just like a printout of the 
sticker look on top of vinyl, or I could have gone the route of picking individual stickers and literally taking the time to go onto the case, put a sticker down, cut it, lay it around, and do all that sort of stuff. That seems a little bit extra, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what I did. I went on Amazon and picked up a pack of 500 vinyl stickers, a variety of stickers, some being more lewd than others, and went through with my girlfriend's help, I greatly appreciate her helping me out with this, putting these stickers on this case, lining it up across the entire body of the case, the bottom portion underneath the tempered glass, the front panel, the back panel, and the top panel, having to cut around some fan holes and different case cutouts and just little grooves that I had to deal with, and also making a little bit of an improvised decision to put it on the inside cable management grommet inside the H500, which actually turned out really good. And we basically took the time to, well, put all these stickers on there and take our time with uh well slicing them up with an exacto knife to make sure they fit properly and then coming up with a really awesome aesthetic now with all the stickers in place and them cut to size to fit the case the best route to go with was to get a clear coat which i wasn't originally going to do but i started to notice that the stickers even after putting them on and waiting till the next day to do the clear coat were starting to peel up a little bit so i knew that i needed something to make sure that these stickers over time with the change in temperature that is bound to happen with a pc build with the computer being on all day then turned off on all day turned off the adhesive is bound to wear off and the stickers are bound to peel up so I had to go out and get a basic can of clear coat took it outside and just sprayed the crap out of it this basically added a layer of adhesive to the stickers so that the stickers are less likely to peel up because they're coated down that way now, by no means is this mod perfect. There are still some edges around there that I had to go through and touch up. And some of the stickers I probably over time will have to replace because they're not gonna be on nearly as well. But that is why I got a 500 pack of stickers. We still had this entire bag right here of more of these vinyl stickers that I might use in a keyboard mod. So be sure to stay subscribed if you're interested in seeing another sticker bomb theme mod. Now that I had the PC done, I waited for the clear coat to dry. I was pretty much ready to rebuild my system. Now, there were a couple things I ended up adding to the build as well before I put it back together. The first thing was a new cooler. I originally had a Noctua cooler on there that was designed for the AM4 platform and it actually came with my AMD reviewers kit when we reviewed Ryzen on its first release and it was a good cooler but the colors didn't really match the theme I was going for. I really wanted most of my components to be white to match the white case and then the sticker bomb can be like the exploding accent that a lot of people look at. So what I went with was a cooler that Deepcool sent over. Their Gamax 400 white edition Edition, which looks really good in this case has a white LED fan which I may opt for another RGB fan in the future but as of right now the white LED fan looks really nice and it installed really easily I'm a big fan of deep cool products and the Gamax 400 is no exception it's really easy to install on AM4 you can use the two latch lever mechanism just like the normal stock coolers used to on even old AM3 platforms and it's really easy to install without adding any crazy back plates and I really respect that from a cooler company because there are a ton of companies out there that'll just forego the ease of use for for the insulation of the consumer and just throw some really complicated insulation instructions and very complicated insulation brackets for people and it just ends up taking like an hour to install a cpu cooler when with this cooler i can install it in like 20 minutes or less and this is definitely a cooler that i'm going to be using when i do pc flips because of it's just pure ease of use when it comes to every single mounting type even intel another thing i went out and picked up was a couple of products from asia horse i'm a very big fan of asia horse products they're rgb fans and rgb strips i I originally used them in a client PC build. If you hit the eye in the top right corner, you can check that video out, more like right here. Uh, if you check that video out, I did use Asia Horse RGB strips and RGB fans, and they looked really good in the custom PC mod in, well, another NZXT case that I used, the S340 Elite, and I wanted to buy the exact same thing. So I went out and picked up a three pack of the RGB fans and the two pack of the RGB strips. Yes, it does look like an RGB unicorn vomited all over this PC case, but honestly, that's what I like. And I could also change the color to pure white or really whatever color I want to, considering I went for a more neutral color scheme inside the case, it's easy to change the color inside and it still matches the case because the outside of the case is a rainbow explosion and the inside can be, well, whatever color you really want and it will still look really good. I also decided to do some updates to my storage solution. Instead of the M.2 drive that I used to have in my previous PC from OCZ, I decided to install this Toshiba 240 gigabyte SSD as my boot drive. I took the two terabyte SSD from my streaming PC and threw it 
in as a secondary drive. And also I have two one terabyte hard drives along with my eight terabyte external C drive for my storage solution. It's definitely not optimal, but it works best for me because I have my Windows install on a smaller drive with my more applicable programs. And then I have an SSD on the side that's two terabytes that I can use for games that I wanna load up faster as a scratch disk when I'm doing some video editing and basically just a secondary fast drive that I can use as opposed to throwing everything on a mechanical disk. And that basically concludes my PC. I basically slapped everything else together, did a little bit of cable management, threw on the side panel, booted this thing up, and well, you just have a look and see exactly what I created. So overall guys, I am so pleased with this PC mod. This is one of the best things that I've created and I think it looks really awesome. Now I know this is not for everybody and there are gonna be some people who hate it, there's gonna be some people who love it because the looks are a little bit well out there, but I really like the design and being my personal rig, I want to show off my creativity and show off an idea that I've been wanting to do for years and put it into action with a custom PC build that I feel like reflects my personality and what I like to do with my content and what I like to do with my life in general and this PC really does represent me very well with the way that my mind is well like very scattered and creative and I really like the way this thing turned out and I hope that you all did as well if you have any suggestions for different things that I could add to this PC mod let me know in the comment section down below but I really like the way that little figurine adds a little bit of personality to the setup and yeah I'm kind of a big Star Wars nerd but yeah that about wraps this video up here guys if you like this video leave a like down below and comment in the XT in the comment section down below if you made it this far. I would love to know in the comment section what you all think of this mod and whether or not you consider doing a sticker bomb PC mod in the past or if you have one right now. I would love to know in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this style of content and let me know what other kind of mods you want to see on the channel and maybe some different sticker theme mods. I would love to know in the comment section down below. Thanks again to Deep Cool for providing the cooler for this build and OCZ slash Toshiba for providing the SSD that we actually use in multiple videos but eventually landed up as being the main SSD for this system and was originally my main SSD for my primary PC so very special thanks to OCC Toshiba they've been helping us out a ton with helping out with our production machines and providing SSDs and products for us to use and providing us products to use in our custom builds that we showcase on the channel thanks again guys for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one peace out